I'm a whistleblower from Iowa Select Farms, which is the largest pork producer, in, you know, quote unquote pork producer in Iowa. This uh, person was a truck driver. He's now public. His name is Lucas Walker. Got in touch with us. And, um, you know, and I think it's very powerful to point, you know, to really emphasize that point. We have somebody, I mean, this is a man who owns, he has pigs in his backyard, you know, which we don't feel great about. But the point is, is that this is somebody who's very entrenched in the industry. He's a truck driver for this massive factory farming company. And he was mortified by what he saw. And it caused him to contact us, to contact who you would think would be his mortal enemies. And he's now a, a, a friend of mine, really. And uh, long story short, this led us to capturing uh, the first ever footage of this uh, ventilation shutdown is what it's called. Uh, the first ever time it was caught on tape as it applies to pigs. And, you know, arguably it has this very dubious distinction of being the most horrific factory farm footage ever caught on tape. Um, you know, and yeah, you literally have pigs just screaming for their lives for, for hours on end. Uh, what were you saying? Yeah, I was going to say ventilation shutdown sounds doesn't sound too bad. I mean, the the term sounds kind of, you know, it doesn't sound particularly brutal. It sounds like nothing much. Uh, what actually is it? What actually is it? Yeah. So so you know, yeah, they they sh they shut off literally the ventilation. They put insulation over the vents uh, and make sure the doors are closed tight and the, all the vents where air can come in and out are sealed off. So you just have this like airtight barn. Load thousands of pigs inside pump in heat, pump in steam, and over the series of several hours, uh, the, the pigs are killed. And the audio, you know, we captured audio, we captured video of this. And um, I mean, if people want to check it out, it's out there. If people want to contact me, I can, I can make sure you are, have access to it. But if you don't want to subject yourself to that, I can just tell you, if you imagine what it would sound, you know, what, what, what the sound you'd envision if it was like Times Square, New York City, massive crowds, a bomb goes off and people are dying, scrambling, confused, terrified, like what that would sound like, like the 10 seconds after a bomb goes off and just like stretch that out into like one or two hours. That that's pretty much what we're talking about, what it sounded like for these pigs. And, you know, as a thank you for exposing this horrifying and criminal conduct, I am now facing, uh, well, most significantly a felony prosecution and, and some other charges, including uh, very recently now an ag gag charge in Iowa, uh, which um, is somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 10 years in prison, potentially. And the company, despite us having a legal opinion, I mean, despite, first of all, common sense telling you that what they're doing is horrifying, uh, but also a legal opinion and a veterinary opinion supporting the claim that, that what they're doing is, is not just horrifying on the face of it, but also criminal conduct. They're facing no repercussions and have been thoroughly catered to by the government officials in Iowa, to whom they have contributed um, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And you must see a lot of this kind of animal cruelty and a lot of animal suffering uh, in, your, in your job. Do you emot are you emotionally affected when when you when you first hear a sound like that? Well, that, that's a great question. I think um, yeah, it's kind of interesting to go go back to kind of my childhood experience where I I, I think if you you know the pop, pop psychology in me and I've kind of, I've done a little bit of research into this. I I think what I experienced would qualify as secondhand trauma as a child and not even at the you know, there wasn't the visceral footage or, you know, anything like that that I saw, but just like the very notion, like all these people around me are, are totally cool with this. Apparently it's like, I could just eat bread or something, but they're like choosing to, to go along with this whole killing and eating animals thing. And so to me, you know, in my experience, that was when I kind of had that, that whatever you want to call that, where it was just, whoa, I don't even know what to do with this. Um, and for better, for worse, I think, you know, there's some good and some bad to it. I think like as an adult, it's just more of a kind of 
objective, I guess, like kind of, kind of cold in a way. It's just mm. like, you know, this is the way, whatever's going on in the world. And I'm just going to like zoom in on, you know, what do I do to make it better? And I mean, you have these, you know, literally while this ventilation shutdown is happening, I'm at a hotel room 10 minutes away. We got the, got this app that's, that's streaming footage, you know? And so like this whole thing is going down and I'm talking to other folks who are involved with this whole project. And it's like, yeah, I mean, part of me is just like, let's go there right now and just bust that door open and whatever, you know, that's like your emotions and, you know, you do the quote unquote objective, you know, maximum impact sort of thing to do. And, um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. It, it doesn't, uh, emotionally weigh on me, which I probably, you know, net net think is, is an advantage. Uh, but it's, it's complicated and weird and uncomfortable, you know? Were you actually arrested as a result of this or, or were you just, cause I, cause I thought I read that you got arrested and you went on a hunger strike, but maybe that was a, a different investigation. Glenn Greenwald, you know, wrote this right up in the intercept uh, and that came out. And then the following morning, 5 a.m., uh, yeah, my, our hotel room, banging on the door. I'm asleep, you know, hey, you know, barely just waking up, thinking this must be a very persistent uh, housekeeping person. Like, why are you knocking multiple times? What time is it? I don't know what the hell's going on. Just open the door. Okay, there you go. Dragged off taken to, to jail. Um, there's a, uh, you know, when, when I was told at the time, this, this is really interesting for people to, to think about too, in terms of, you know, how they kind of bluff you, uh, $5,000 bond. So you need to put up $5,000 to, to be released at any point. And, um, yeah, felony, felony prosecution with, with some, uh, you know, felony, uh, larceny and, uh, misdemeanor trespass and uh, wiretapping charge, you know, big, scary stuff, you know, and, um, they're, they're going to keep me in. And we had, you know, we kind of thought there was a good chance this is going to happen. So we sort of had it lined up and it was like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you as respectfully as I know how that I, uh, I'm not going to be paying your bond and I'm not going to be signing any sort of uh, conditional release, which the lawyers I've talked to is like, nobody ever gets released from jail without signing a conditional release. Um, and so I said, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, we're not paying your bond. I'm not signing anything to be released. I'm also not eating any food until the governor of Iowa addresses this issue. And um, yeah, lo and behold, 24 hours later, I was, kicked out of jail they wouldn't let me stay I, 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 bro, we don't care you're not signing nothing you're not eating nothing you're not whatever you're a big goddamn headache and you need to go uh which you know that's not gonna happen all the time you know you gotta have your media strategy lined up and so on so don't 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 come yelling at me when you you know whatever but uh you know it's the, they put on a facade they put on a face up there and they're pretty damn terrified of what we can do to them, at least as much as, you know, we are terrified of what they can do to us. But yeah, I mean, before we move on, just, just let that sink in that pigs were being roasted alive. A person exposed it and that person was arrested. I mean, if there was ever a sign that there is something deeply wrong with, um, with, with our society, I mean, that, that's a big sign right there. Um, and, and what what a like what a sense of injustice that that brings out, really. Oh, a hundred percent. And um, I know you had Temple Grandin on your podcast here recently, and Temple Grandin wrote on this very topic about just you know everything we're saying right now about how you know this is the feeblest of purely financial motivation to do this, and that's you know. I guess sort of coming back to what you what we were talking about earlier of how like the like the most horrible stuff is in a way the most useful stuff because it just like highlights our point and it's like what what jury you know in the world is like okay yeah on paper you can throw all these charges at me what random sample of my peers in anywhere in Iowa I grew up in Iowa they're not like crazy sadistic horrible people I mean there's a little there's some social norms and you know yada yada about how wholesome farming is but no if I'm on a stand and I am just allowed to speak for a few minutes 
nah, bro, you're like, you're going to, you're going to get like roasted and I'm going <laughs> to out of there and you're going to regret every bit of this.